Hi guys. So, um, I haven't really updated recently, and that is just because I have not been feeling well, and there's just been a lot going on with my husband being gone, um, out in the field for training and such. But I am going to start doing videos again. Um, I'm probably going to post a video, kind of like a recap of the past couple of weeks, and then, uh, a video for the 14th week which is this week um, bear with me I sound like crap I have a cold still it's been coming and going around the house like you would not believe but anyway um this video actually has nothing to do with this pregnancy um, I wanted to do a video on my first pregnancy with my daughter you guys about that so anyway um, I was in high school I was in my last year um, I was 18. I've always been ahead of age-wise just because of my birth date. Um, when I got pregnant, I was actually engaged to my husband already, and um, we didn't really get married because I was pregnant, just to kind of just sped things along a little bit. But anyway, um, I was in high school. It was awkward. Obviously, it was not something I, we had planned at all. Um, I wasn't on any birth control um, or anything, really, uh, which is kind of stupid. I know. Trust me. I'm, I know. But, uh, yeah. So, I have a little sticky note here on my computer so I can actually stop rambling and get to the point. Um how I found out I was pregnant. Uh, I was a week and a half late. I had been late before, which was, in my way, my thinking. It was kind of like God saying, you know, you keep playing with fire, you're going to get burned, but I never really listened. And this time that I was late, I was pregnant. But um, I was actually in foods class, and one of the girls that sat at the table with us, she just so happened to have extra pregnancy test later on so I went to her house after school to take this test and I remember coming downstairs and handing her the test like I didn't even look at it after I did it or anything and I'm like you know I'm too nervous you have to read the test for me and I mean mind you this girl I hardly knew so it's like kind of awkward I guess but she looked down at the test she looked up at me and she just went uh, congratulations, and I, my heart just sank, I was like, oh my god, what the heck am I gonna do now, so, yeah, I left her house, like, thinking, what in the world have I done, and, <clears throat> and, um, I was actually walking down the street, because I didn't live too far from her, so I was gonna walk home, but I was walking down the street, and I saw a friend from school, um, a really good friend. She was actually the maid of honor at our wedding, but she was down the block, and I just remember I saw her, and I just started bawling my eyes out, and she kind of knew what was going on, and, um, you know, she gave me a ride home. We kind of talked a little bit, but, yeah, so here I was, 18, pregnant, um, another statistic, uh, I was terrified. I did not want to tell my parents. I did not want to tell my boyfriend at the time. Well, actually, he was my fiancé at the time. I just, I did not know what to do. But, you know, in that kind of situation, you just have to get over it and just do it. So I told my husband, or at the time, my fiancé first. And he was upset. Uh, you know, obviously, we weren't ready for kids yet. We, you know, he wanted to get married young. He wanted a big family, but he came from a very Christian upbringing, and sex before marriage was definitely a no-no in his parents' eyes. And I grew up with the same, not the same religious background, but just the same moral background, I should say, that was kind of instilled in my head just because my mom, my mom was a teen pregnancy. Um, her first was at 17, so, you know, she wanted what's best for me. 
and here I was, <laughs> just, you know, repeating history, I guess, and yeah, so he was terrified to tell his parents because he thought they were, like, just going to chop his head off, basically, and he did um, suggest getting an abortion, which I shut down immediately because that is just my own opinion, my own personal beliefs, that's, that's like, no, you don't do that, especially not just because we're stupid and got pregnant, you know, it happens, and we knew it was going to happen at some point, so it was our own stupid fault, so that was not an option, and adoption was not an option with me either, just because of, you know, stuff that my, that my own mother went through uh, with her first child, so... Um, I basically told him that you could either stay or you could go. That's pretty much it. Like, I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to beg you to stay, but I'm not giving up this baby. And so he kind of, like, you know, accepted that. He's like, no, no, I'll stay, you know, whatever. And he ended up telling his parents, and they did not freak out as much as we expected. Um, they were more along the lines of, yeah, we knew that. We figured she was pregnant or going to get pregnant at some point. So... Yeah, I guess it was no surprise for them, which is kind of, for me, it's kind of like a little sad because I'm not saying that teen moms aren't good children. I'm just saying that, you know, I never did anything. Like, I never went to parties. I never drank. I never did drugs. I never smoked a cigarette. I was just the poster child for, you know, being a good kid. Like, I didn't get the best grades in the world, but I didn't suck either, and... You know, I had college plans, I had future plans, um, I had a lot of things that I wanted to do with my life, but, you know, it doesn't make me a bad person, I, I don't think, I think that, you know, my husband and I both handled it pretty well, you know, and here we are six years later, still married, and, you know, baby number four on the way, so I think we did a pretty good job, um, anyway, my pregnancy, I did not tell my mom, until I was about three months pregnant. I had no symptoms. It's not like I was getting up every morning and puking or I just, you know, was super tired or any of that stuff. Like, I had no symptoms whatsoever. I was fine. Um, she never knew. I don't know how, but she just, she never knew. And I finally told her via a letter and that I handed to her before my husband uh, picked me up for church. And as my brother and I were getting into his car, my mom comes running out of the house screaming at me, like, you know, what the hell, you can't, you know, get in this house right now, blah, 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 and I'm just like, no, I don't think so. I think I'm going to go to church and let you cool off. So, I mean, at this point, it <coughs> excuse me, at this point, I didn't tell my dad or anything yet. Um, I didn't really have a close relationship with my dad, so it really didn't matter to me. If I told him at this point or not, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it started. Um, as far as that went, I was, you know, feeling fine, feeling great, you know, no issues whatsoever. Normally I have a sensitive stomach, but while I was pregnant with her, I had like an iron stomach. Like I felt great. I could eat whatever I wanted. It didn't like, you know, like get sick from it like I normally do. And, um, yeah, it was perfect. Um, up until about 23 weeks. Uh, at about 23 weeks, I noticed that I was leaking fluid, and I just assumed that it was just, you know, urine. It usually happened, like, after I went to the bathroom and stuff like that, like, when I'd get up, and I'd be finished and stuff, and, like, go wash my hands or something, and then all of a sudden I felt, like, a little trickle of fluid. And finally I said something to my mom, because I was a little embarrassed about it, you know, I mean... I've always been quite modest, I guess, and, you know, being my first pregnancy, like, I had no idea what to expect, and I really didn't like people poking and prodding down there and talking about that stuff or anything. So I finally told my mom, and she made me go to the doctor, and my doctor did one of those, like, swab, cotton swab tests or whatever to see if the fluid was amniotic fluid, did the test, came back, and said that, yes, it was. And she put me on the monitor, and I was having contractions. It was just, it didn't feel painful, so I really didn't, like, I, you know, assumed that contractions would be, like, you know, my uterus ripping itself out or something. But it really wasn't painful. I just felt like, you know, 
a tightening in my stomach and then it would stop and then it would come back and stuff like that. And she's like, um, you've been having contractions. So I was in preterm labor. So she took and she admitted me to the hospital. And while I was there, they, you know, put IVs in me, set me up with fluids and stuff. It was horrible because the doctor that I had tried putting an IV in my arm and she didn't do a good job and she like my whole like arm swelled up with the fluid that she was giving me it was like great but but yeah but since the hospital that I was at didn't have a great uh, NICU for preterm babies they uh, wanted to send me to a different hospital and the closest hospital from where we were at was like a couple hours away they thought the fastest way of getting there instead of going via ambulance, uh, was to get a helicopter ride. So I got life flighted to the Peoria St. Francis Hospital, and <laughs> that was a little exciting for me because I like airplanes, I'm, I like heights and stuff like that. So it was kind of cool. I mean, considering, you know, what was going on, it was, it was a highlight of what was going on, I guess. So um, I stayed in that hospital for a week. They did, you know, like... So many ultrasounds. I think I have so many pictures of her just because of the ultrasounds. So that was kind of cool. You know, I have a lot of baby pictures of her or uterus pictures of her, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've kind of lost my modesty at that point because I had so many doctors in and out of that room and poking and prodding and whatnot. So they were checking the fluid levels to see if she had enough fluid in there. Um, they were trying to see where the, because my water didn't break, it was just leaking. So they were trying to find out where the leak was coming from, like if they could see a tear or something that they could fix. Um, or like they wanted to check to see if my cervix was opening or dilating or anything so that, you know, possibly I might have had to have it sewn shut until I was ready to have the baby. Um, they put me on, I think it was magnesium sulfate. I think it's been a long time. It's been six years, so I think that's what it's called. Um, which I absolutely hated because I lost a lot of uh, movement in my muscles and stuff. Like to get up to go to the bathroom, I needed help because I couldn't quite stand up by my own. And it just I slept most of the time, like in between poking and prodding and ultrasounds and whatnot. I slept most of the time. It just made me extremely, extremely tired, and um, it sucked. I do not like medication whatsoever. I'm kind of lightweight when it comes to drugs, and I don't like not being in control of my body. So that sucked. So at the end of that week, um, they finally decided that I had nowhere that I was leaking from. They couldn't find a tear, a hole, puncture, whatever you want to call it, you know, and her fluid levels were great. She, like, didn't drop in fluid levels, so they're, like, the only explanation they could possibly think of is that I actually had two bags, and the one um, outer bag or whatever kind of busted, or was leaking, I guess. They, they don't even know for sure if that's what it was. In all honesty, it was just kind of a miracle because they had no idea where it was coming from, but they definitely knew that I was leaking fluids. So, uh, they put me on bed rest. I was still in high school, so I actually had to have a tutor come to the house. And at this point, I was living with uh, my fiance. Well, no, at this time, it was my husband and his family. Because when I told my dad um, I was pregnant, he pretty much gave me the boot. Um, so... I was living with him so basically I was on bed rest and had a tutor coming so I could finish high school I didn't go you know I wasn't able to go to prom or graduation which was fine at that point because I was kind of I was uh, pretty goth back in high school and uh, you know pep and spirit and all that f crap from high school was just not you know now I regret, you know, not being able to go because it's something like the memories, you know, whatever. But at the time it was okay. So I finished high school, I got my diploma and everything. Uh, I did great in my classes, actually. Uh, that was pretty much that. And she 
stayed in my stomach until her due date. She was born on her due date, uh, which part two will be the delivery.